in the beginning it was all one force. That's what the, the book the book Rujan was saying that the uncreate was full. It had everything. And the difference between the masculine energy is there's a son of the mother and a son of the father. The son of the father is solar, a solar deity, which means that motherfucker's gonna burn out. If it's a created light, which is usually your masculine deity. The son of the mother is a lunar deity, which just lunar represents the dark side, which means it is an energy that is forever. It is the energy of, but that is forever. Um, this particular side here, where you got the dark side, which is the yin side, but remember in the book, the, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, they talk about the law, ma, yin. Well, law is feminine, ma is feminine, and yin is feminine. And but isn't it interesting that that's always called, they say, well, that this is the, the hell realm and the demonic realm, the law, ma, yin. So, we talk about darkness, but it's interesting because everything on this side is feminine. The black hole, death, darkness and night, dark night of the soul, the moon, lunar, electron, feminine. You see what I'm saying? Uh, 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 the womb, the gates of hell. You see what I'm saying? So obviously, we have literally Replace one world with the other world. But the other world has to burn out because it is the subordinate world. Now, going back to the Hermetic text, which is some of the oldest stuff in the world, uh, because uh, even Charles Finch said that basically um, when, they, when they got all this stuff out the Library of Alexandria, that's what became the Hermetic text. They got a lot of these books out of the Library of Alexandria. But in there it says that the God that rules the universe is a subordinate God. And although he gives the nourishment over this particular earth realm, he does not have the nourishment to for everything there is, which means beyond the universe, or even, even for some of the people in the universe. It says it is always, the highest power is always with us in the ground, in the circle. That means hell, which is also dealing with feminine, because in the beginning there was Gaia. You see what I'm saying? To give you some more information, uh, Jeremiah and H.P. Egypt, Light of the World said that the goddess Setna, although she was woven into a later pantheon, they say that this goddess is a form of the great mother that goes back. They say as long as they had Africa, they had a Setna. And uh, a set man, and later on becomes the god of evil. So to get a good uh, glimpse of that, you need to get the the Babylonian Genesis by Alexander Hadel with the mysteries of Tiamat, with the whole it's called the uh, Enuma Elish, where Tiamat they overthrew her son overthrew her, and in turn took her blood and made humans out of it. So. It's the same little thing. We have Tiamat's blood in us, which is melanin, which is a pre-creation blood that is inside of us. So, so all of this is, now, the key is, is this, about the feminine, because it does play in part. In so many words, and I talked about this yesterday, you can get it in the Gnostic scripture, in so many words, what happened was, is the energy to disrupt the uncreate. Her son was able to harness some of her light, steal it from her, create this universe. But in the process of creating this universe and later on creating man, he ends up losing the light and we gain the damn light. So that particular light is still coming from the great mother. But spiritually, it's still a form of the same androgyny. It's the whole. So now what do you call that? Um, well, based on world mythology, they still call that feminine. It's, see, the masculine, there's a, they still call that feminine. There is just a, but, but, but see, the reason why if you go back beyond the solar deities, they worship the world great mother. 
Because the world great mother is the only deity that is comprised of both masculine and physical. Feminine. Yeah. And basically the masculine is nothing but an extension of her, it's her clitoris. Only in the aspect of creation. Then you get the he aspect. And the creation is a light that's stolen from the mother. If it's a light stolen from the mother, that still would be feminine. The uh, on the top of the Kabbalah, once you get past all of the spins, it still says Ain, Ain, Sada, Uda, Ain, Sada. And these are supposed to be the primal realm, but all of those are represented as physical, feminine. The nothingness is still feminine, but the nothingness is something. Even if we talk about the primal light that was stolen, it's, it, it, it's a, if something's stolen from her, it's still hers. So I'm just saying the principles, masculine and feminine, do apply, but they're still all the holiness of the one create. And based on world mythology, they call that feminine. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you could call that feminine. It could be just be the nothingness of the uncreate. Aim sort of order and just we gotta play on words based on the English language. Or you see what I'm saying? You see of uh, uh, the English language and stuff. But basically we're still talking about two aspects of the same.